Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. We're continuing our fruit and floral series. We're painting tulips this week with pears and lemons. And if you can, I'd encourage you to get your own flowers and fruit and set up your own still life. There's so much to learn when we're painting live. I just love seeing the shadows and adding those shadows and depths. We only use a couple colors in this painting. It's really a fun entering into spring painting and I hope you love it. I hope you enjoy the blend of fruit and flowers and soon it's going to be spring. I know in North America we are battling winter weather everywhere but I hope this warms up your day. Okay well welcome back to another Wednesday paint with me. I'm so excited we're continuing with our fruit and flower series so I've been playing um, with one and I, I we're going to do tulips and pears and lemons all with yellows and greens. It's going to be really Fun, very, very warm. I wanted to make it a little bit bigger though. So the fun thing with still lifes is, you know, when you're using fresh fruit, you can turn it. You can don't even have to have as many pieces. Like I just have one pair that I'm turning on different sides. But there's so many different ways you can create different paintings with the same fruit and flowers. So I'm gonna set this one up here as I start to paint. Now because I'm painting a little bit bigger this morning. I am going to use some bigger paint brushes. So I've got um, a size, I think this is a larger one, a size 8 here, and then my favorite size 7. And I'll probably be pulling another one out. But what I want to do is because on these YouTube videos, I know we're all busy and I'm trying to create rather quickly. So no longer than 20 minutes on a video. So I'm going to go ahead and then just start laying down. And these are going to be kind of almost very sketchy watercolors. And that's my goal, because really the, I'm playing with light, and right now I'm painting, it's about 7.30 in the morning. So I've got some shadows, I've got the warm sunlight coming in and hitting the flowers. So I'm looking at where the light's coming in, where I'm gonna be adding that gamboge for the deeper color. We're gonna be using, we'll use a tad bit of purple for our shadows besides the yellow and green. I'm also gonna be putting yellow, I see yellow in the um, the stems, so we'll add some yellow first. I'm just adding all of my yellow on first. Even in my vase, which is green, I can see the water line with the light coming in, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and, and we'll sketch, and these will disappear because we'll add the green, but I think it's a neat way to also <clears throat> create some depth. For the pear, I see a lot of yellow. I'm also almost gonna make it like it's modeled and then we'll add some green to it. And so this is, um, I believe this is a lemon yellow too. No, actually it's cadmium, cadmium yellow light that I'm using right now and I'll come in a little bit more. The other thing that I think I'm going to do is I was thinking I'm gonna go ahead and make that background back here yellow because we'll end up creating a purple for our shadowing and then for the background too. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down that initial color right here and then with the lemons, I am going to, I'm looking at them. I'm gonna put just a bit down here. Now the lemons are more solid and farcer color. There's The pears are a bit more gentle and I'm taking that into consideration as I lay this down. Okay, so now that I have that, I am gonna come back up here. I'm gonna grab some gamboge and I'm gonna start adding in darker color for my yellow for the tulips because they are a beautiful golden yellow. And so I want to add that bold color in. It's been, I think I bought these tulips. Oh, I bought them about almost a week ago. And so they have gone from being all closed up to opening and closing with the, the morning sun, which is always a lot of fun. But they're getting a little bit, they just are not, they just start getting a little bit frayed at the edges, which I think is actually a really beautiful look. So the sun is coming and hitting them. So all... Everything that's facing me is a bit darker, so I wanna make sure I'm adding that bolder yellow and we'll add a little bit of purple too to create a bit of shadowing. And I can, part of it where I wanna, I wanna keep it a sense of translucence with some of these, so I'm not gonna paint all of them in. I'm gonna leave white. Okay, that looks really good. I'm just gonna move this around a bit here. And I was sketching with Micron Pen, that just kind of helps everything go faster and then you can see it better too. Now, our, definitely down here, 
for our lemons. These are Meyer lemons from a friend's tree, and so they are very bold. I'm gonna take that gamboge and lay that on pretty, pretty thick here, and we'll add a little bit of purple for some shadowing. All right, so we're gonna let that start to dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the green. And I have a permanent green, and on my palette I have a um, hooker's green. I'm gonna pick up some of that permanent green. I have a sap green, but we're not gonna use that today. That would, I think, be too muted and too warm for what I wanna do. So I'm gonna start going ahead and laying down some of this green here. And you can see, even my sketching was pretty light. I wasn't trying to do big outlines. I was more just wanting to lay down that initial sketch so I knew where I was going with the paint. And I love that whoever put together this tulip bouquet where I bought them, they didn't cut away a lot of stems. They just let a lot of, they let a lot of the stems with the tulips. So I have stems going everywhere which I think creates a bit of a sense of wildness with the tulips because they're such a regal flower. But then when you have all these stems, it, it kind of balances out that regalness with just a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of flair, a personality flair. So and we are gonna create definitely a darker image with some of these leaves, which are darker. They have a nice bold green color, but I don't want it to blend Okay, so we're continuing to lay down that green. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit more of that permanent green and go ahead and move it for the vase because the vase is green as well. So this is quite, it's just basically using yellow and green, a tad bit of purple for our shadowing, but a lot of green in this one. I'm gonna lay this down. I wanna be cognizant that I don't dabble that green into the lemons, or even the pear, because I want that to be very distinct. So pulling that down and going around the pear, and then coming around the bottom here. And fairly light. I'm gonna take some darker areas. I'm gonna go right under the rim here of the vase, and then inside it as well. And going around the bottom because we have a lot of shadowing at the bottom where the light is not hitting it so much. Coming up around these nice leaves. I think I'm gonna add in some more yellow. And with the larger brush, you can definitely paint more and paint a little bit faster, right? I'm gonna just carefully coming down on that though. Okay, that's coming together really, really nice. All right, I'm gonna come back I'm gonna pick up, making sure my brush is nice and clean, I'm gonna pick up a bit of gamboge and the yellow and then just come back in a little bit, right in here, and we're gonna add more green as well. But just where I'm seeing light and some of that warmth hit the leaves, I wanna add a little bit more right in here. Okay, now for our pears, let me make sure you can see those. I'm gonna come in just a little bit for the pears. I'm gonna take the hooker's green and water it down quite a bit. And I am going to go ahead and move around and start to come and fill in the pairs a bit. Noting too where the shadowing is. I have a lot of speckles on these pairs and we could use a brown, but instead we're gonna use a purple because I don't wanna to add too much color I wanna keep this as close to our couple of colors as possible. So moving this around and letting that sit, you can see the contrast between the pears and the Meyer lemons, right? It's quite a big contrast. Okay, I'm gonna move that. I'm gonna grab some purple now. This may seem a little bit bold. I'm gonna take that purple and where I'm seeing the shadowing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and just lay down that purple right in here. I've got shadowing underneath the face, all around these pairs. We're gonna come back in and soften it up a bit, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and move it right in here. I don't wanna get it inside the yellow, but definitely starting to add a bit right boldly where those shadows are, right under the vase lid, lip, I guess you could call it here. 
and letting that sit and then on the back as well I'm going to go ahead right where the pear stem is. I'm going to dab in purple there and making sure you can see this. Okay, okay, good, you can. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. I'm also going to start taking some of that purple and taking that tip and where I'm seeing shadowing on my tulips, I'm softly adding some purple. Not a ton, just a little bit. Again, we're adding the, the, it, the shadow adds depth. We're not trying to bring it a bold new color, but where I'm just pulling that down and we'll come back into and add a little bit more yellow to soften things up where I feel like it gets too bold. So I'm sheen shadowing here and then down below here. I can pull that over here on these stems. I've got some shadowing definitely over here on this one. This guy, again, the sun is coming in over here, so these are all going to be a bit, have a shadow on them. Up here in my edges, I see some shadowing. Okay, I've got to pick up some more purple here. I've got some shadowing over on this side of the vase, so I'm going to pull that down here. I'm going to go back over to my pear. I'm going to do just little dots because I have a bunch of spotted dots on my pair. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few dots, not tons, and we're going to let the paint blend in and then I'll come back in with some more of the warm colors. I got a little bit of coloring in here that blended. I'm not bothered by that though. That's okay. I'm going to blend in with the purple with the yellow so it's not so bold. And I'm going to come back in on some more right in here, and I think I picked up, I must have had something else in there. Okay, there we go. But again, just move it around wherever you're seeing the shadowing on your flowers, moving that around. Doesn't have to be tons. We definitely want the colors to still pop, but this is gonna bring in some more depth. Okay, this is actually looking really nice. What I'm gonna do now is that does look severe with the green on the vase, so I'm gonna simply take my larger brush we're going to just do a wash with the green over it and we're going to go ahead and move that around and that's also going to create some of that shadowing, right? I'm going to come over here and then over here in the darker part of the vase around the lemon. I'm going to come over here and just drop a little bit more green into my pear to blend in some of those mottled spots because I don't want it to look like purple polka dots. And that looks really nice. I actually really like the way that color is coming together and showing off some of those, that depth. Now down here where it's a bolder purple, I'm gonna take some purple, I'm gonna mix it with some yellow, and then I'm gonna come back out down here and I'm gonna blot that because I have another color in there. I think I blot this off. Let me go to a different part of my palette that's cleaner. Okay, try that again. Yellow, purple, that looks better come back over here and now move this around where it's shadowing there. That looks really nice. I'm going to take that color too. I'm going to put some water on it and then just start moving it around the flowers, not too much. Also, if you just want it to be a little bit more purplish, you can, or yellow. If you want to do a little bit more yellow, that's another option. You can keep the whole palette very, very bright. I can add a bit more yellow in there and just keep it super light on this side. And it is a beautiful morning. It is cold out. It is so February still. It was just freezing on my run this morning. And yet that sun is really coming in nice and warm. We'll do a little bit of a darker color shadow back here. We'll keep it lighter up top. We are almost finished here. I don't want to overdo it because this can be a little bit of a fragile style of painting, I find. When I've got the fruit, I've got the flowers and the background, I'm trying to complete it rather quickly of just getting in practice, of laying down that still life, of catching the shadows without overworking it. Okay, and if you see anywhere where you're like, gosh, it's just too heavy with paint, you can always come back in and um, we'll go a little bit in there. Just blot around a little bit. You can, so over here, for example, I'm just gonna blot some of that shadowing and I can always come back in to spread that over a little bit and then add a little bit more. 
Don't be afraid to go bold though, especially with the shadows because the shadows are bold, right? They are quite bold. So I'm gonna come back in here with that purple and just keep it a little bit softer. I think probably right on our pear here, it would be a bit darker against the lemon. So I'm gonna come in carefully and just bring in that green a bit more right up against that lemon. Add a tad bit of purple, just a little bit though, to show where that shadow is and then over here as well. Okay, this looks nice. I don't wanna overdo it, so I am, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna walk away, <laughs> the only thing. Before I do though, if you wanna add a little bit more pop in your tulips, this is a good time to add some gamboge or some cadmium medium, just a little bit more color. If you feel like the purple got too, you got too much purple and you just, again, need a little bit of pop to bring the life back in, we'll add just a little bit there and we're good. Isn't that fun? Is it, it looks really, really lovely. A beautiful portrait for spring. All right, you guys, see you soon.